In this video, we'll go over the requirements and considerations for converting an application to use one of the new ARM-based Power PMAX CPUs. For the vast majority of users with an existing Power PC-based system, they will be able to just build it and download it onto an ARM CPU without any noticeable differences. However, there are still a few things to be aware of. We will divide this video into five sections. First, we will go over the changes to the hardware, firmware, and software for the new CPUs. Then, we'll discuss EtherCAT and C programming, the two areas in which users may want or need to modify their project. For now, let's start with the hardware changes. Depending on which PowerPC CPU the user is coming from, the number of cores and speed for the actual processor, the amount of RAM and storage space, and the number of Ethernet ports all have a range of possible values. In ARM CPUs, they are all at least dual-core CPUs running at at least 1 GHz. They will have either 1 GB each of RAM and flash memory, or 2 GB of RAM and 4 GB of flash memory. Also, all ARM CPUs have two Ethernet ports, typically with one use for communication and one for EtherCAT, though the second port can be reconfigured for communication. While there is no ARM Power Clipper at this point, there are ARM versions of the UMAC and Power Brick families. Additionally, the CK3E and CK3M families are made exclusively using ARM CPUs. This means that any modules made only for the CK3M family cannot be controlled from any PowerPC CPU. By comparison, a PowerPC-based UMAC rack can have an ARM CPU inserted instead and it will work just fine. Another thing that changed are some of the connector locations. On a power brick, for instance, the encoder connectors are now all grouped together. If present, the field bus connector and the encoder power jumper both move to the top. Meanwhile, all of the analog I.O. move to the bottom. Additionally, some options have changed, so not every option previously available will still be available, and there may be some new options that were not offered before. Similar changes have been made on other power brick form factors and may also occur in the power clipper. Finally, some changes have happened on the CPU itself, which will impact all ARM Power PMAC form factors. Some of the LEDs have moved or even changed, the SD card slot has been removed, and the serial port has changed from a box header to a micro USB connector. Next, we will discuss the firmware changes. Firmware starting with version 2.6 will only be built for ARM Power PMACs by default. If new significant bugs or issues are discovered, new versions may still be released to address them on a case-by-case -case basis. However, new firmware features and improvements are only planned to be released for ARM Power PMAX. For instance, Ethernet IP is included automatically on any new ARM Power PMAC inside of the firmware. To get the same functionality on a Power PC-based PMAC, the user would have to write the code to manage the communication themselves. Additionally, some firmware features tie into parts of the Power PMAC IDE, so new development in the IDE may not be available on older PMAC. This brings us to the changes to the software. First, as a rule of thumb, we typically recommend using newer firmware with newer versions of the IDE. If you have an existing project made in a previous version of the IDE, you will be able to open it in the newer version. Doing this will perform a one-way conversion on the project, so users may want to make a copy of their project first. Keeping the IDE version synchronized with the firmware will obviously become difficult moving forward when new versions of the IDE are released but no accompanying firmware is released for older CPUs. While there are no plans on future IDE versions to stop working with the older CPUs, new features may not be supported on them. For instance, new tuning modes or features that require new firmware will be incompatible with older CPUs. Additionally, IDE version 4 only supports configuring EtherCAT using the Acontis stack. By comparison, IDE version 3 only supported natively configuring EtherCAT using the EtherLab stack. This leads us to EtherCAT. PowerPC-based CPUs are only able to communicate using the EtherLab EtherCAT stack. ARM CPUs are able to communicate using the Acontis EtherCAT stack. While the EtherLab EtherCAT stack does offer more flexibility, it requires more user configuration and may not work with all EtherCAT slave devices. By comparison, the Acontis EtherCAT stack is more streamlined and is often significantly faster to configure. 
Because of this, it is generally recommended users look into converting projects using Etherlab to a Contus instead. Finally, this brings us to C programming. Each different CPU requires a different compiler, which will be installed the first time a build and download action is performed before compiling the code. If the user has an existing project that uses C code, they should perform a clean operation on the project before performing a build and download. This will get rid of any binary files generated for the wrong compiler. The larger complication with C code has to do with endianness, or the order in which bytes are stored. While PowerPC used Big Endian, ARM and Intel PCUs, found in the industrial PC PMAC, used little Endian storage. When reading the same register from a PowerPC CPU and an ARM CPU, they will disagree on where the most significant byte is. The most significant byte on one will be the least significant byte on the other. Similarly, the second most significant byte will become the second least significant byte, and so on. For most users, this will not matter, as the PMAC will already know how it stores its own data, so data written in the script environment, by the firmware, or even in C, will automatically be stored and read correctly on a given PMAC. However, if the user implements custom C code to talk to another device, they may need to perform a byte swap to reverse the bytes and read the data successfully. This does go both ways though. If the other device already used little Endian, no byte swap is required in ARM, but it would have been required on PowerPC. We hope this video has answered any questions you may have about adapting to the ARM Power PMAX CPU. If you still have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to an Omron representative.